Well, hi and welcome to my beautiful office and my review on the XF605 Camcord. So what's my opinion on the XF605 Camcord? Dynamic, I think. He's doing the better job. <laughs> I just apologise before I go any further. I've got some teeth missing. I know that's not very nice to look at, but hey, I've got to wait a while to get some falsies put in. I am pissed off with Canon and I'm angry with myself. And we'll discuss that in just a minute. But in front of me, we have three generations of XF camcords. XF300, first generation, XF400, second generation, and the new third generation XF605. And when this XF400 came out, I dismissed it because I'm a tech nerd. I study any camera that comes out. So low end, high end, mirrorless, Cinema cameras, you name it, I go and study them and you know, take interest in everything that comes out onto the market. Well, I dismissed it because it has one Kodak, and that's MPEG-4. I didn't think it'd be good enough. There's a lot of things on here that are great that I could see, especially with the wide dynamic range mode. Um, there's a lot of tools missing out of here for exposure, but I sort of... So you know, MPEG-4, that's the killer for me. Well, I finally come across someone who was using one. He guy made food documentaries. Um, I talked to him for a while and he said he loved the camera and he showed me some of the footage and I thought, oh, wow, that is pretty good. It's a good, solid image. So out of 10, I'd give it a 5. But something that I could use for filming wildlife, filming myself, filming inside my nesting boxes because it has uh, infrared, all that sort of thing. So I end up buying it. And this is the reason why I'm really pissed off with myself and I'm telling you all this stuff. Is I bought this because I thought it was going to give me a lot higher end quality than this. Even though I know they're the same sensor tech nerd. I studied everything. I thought that this would give me that higher in quality that I needed because the XF400 was only meant to fill the gap for now until something better come along. So after studying everything about this camera online with all the reviews and all that sort of stuff, I come to the conclusion that even though they share the same sensor, and uh, similar processes, that's a uh, dual Digi 6 processor, and that's the 7 version, so it's just got a little bit more power because of the higher end Kodax, that we would get a little bit better quality. I wasn't expecting it to be a dramatic change in quality, but a bit more where it's a bit cleaner and a little bit sharper, just more detail. That's what I need for what I do with filming wildlife. I really wanted more detail. So finally, I could afford this camera, and I thought, okay, let's buy it and see. But spoiler alert, there is no difference in the quality of these images. They are exactly the same. Now, there's one review that I saw, it was the only one that started talking about the quality of the image. And I think I might have just put the blinkers on a little bit because they remarked on the image quality. And here's what they said. 
INE files while keeping that quality, there's the 4K 10-bit options. And they both look great. Here's the XF705's 10-bit XFHEVC codec, and here's the XF605's 4K All-I, and then the 10-bit MP4. Dramatically different file sizes, but the quality and the detail recorded stays very consistent. I should have realised that the image quality was going to be the same because the image quality throughout these codecs remains the same right through. From top end to the bottom end, there isn't much difference. So yes, um, in the end, I'm really, really pissed off with myself that I didn't see that coming. Being a tech nerd, I should have realised that I wasn't going to gain much. One inch sensors, they share the same sensor. It's slow, it's more or less like a standard sort of sensor. It's not backlit, it's not a stack sensor. So the sensor speed is slow. So when it comes to slow motion, it's crap. <laughs> this has a, a soft image. It, there's not artifacts and crap in it, but it's soft and it's not really completely usable for me. This is exactly the same. The Low Light King that I'm filming myself with right now, the R6, that has a lot faster sensor speed. It has a little bit cleaner and sharper image uh, with slow motion. And the image overall is just a little bit better than you get out of these. Let's put them side by side. So there's not much difference between the two, except for the bit where I'm pissed off with Canon, and that is noise. Doesn't matter what you use in the camera as far as gain or using ISA, because it has that dual system there, you get noise. The noise from the gain is slightly more noticeable than the gain, uh, than the ISO. ISO is just that little bit softer unless you push it up really high. But otherwise, it doesn't matter what lighting conditions you film in. I could have beautiful light on me that's low light, so the sun's just come up, that's the best time to film. We get this beautiful light coming on me, there is noise in the background. So there's no software in the camera to keep that down. It's just noise right through. With the 400, we get uh, just gain in this one, which is ancient and it shouldn't be there in these cameras. It is something from the Stone Age. Gain is not the best idea for gathering more light. But with this one, I thought from the start when I first bought it, that it has some sort of built-in software to keep that noise level down. Now I'm saying that because this camera here and uh, another camcorder I had, you can't go over a gain of three. It, noise levels are just too high. But with this, you could go up to 24, which is huge, a huge amount. So it made me sus looking at the images that they were helped with software within the camera. There is no uh, way of controlling that within the camera, so going into the menu, it doesn't even mention any noise reduction. And it's the same with this one. I've gone through the menu, I've gone through the camera, I cannot find any noise reduction in the camera. So this definitely has it built in, this does not. I'd say if you go up to a gain of 21 in this, it is unusable, in my opinion. Filming in fantastic light, you still need to use software. So processing, adding more to processing, use a good noise reductor to bring it down. 
Anyway, here's some side-by-side -side comparisons that I've done with the noise in the camera. Well, this is going to make for a very, very interesting experiment. XF6A5 on a slight angle. <laughs> XF400 in the middle. Osmo action camera. The lighting conditions are not very good. High cloud, but it's very dull light. Not that fantastic. So, how are we going? Are these two XFs bringing out lots of noise? And the Osmo's kicking their ass? We'll soon see. speak very loud but anyway perfect lighting conditions 8 bit just see how it goes there's the noise and everything like that this is 8 bit with no gain so I've changed it from ISO which you can't go any lower than 500 so I've just taken it all off by doing this. And is there no noise now? This is 8-bit and the lighting conditions are pretty bad. It is a dull and overcast day. So we're just looking to see the difference between 8-bit and 10-bit and the noise levels. 10-bit, full quality. How am I looking? Am I looking pretty sexy? Lots of detail in this horribly lit environment? Or do I look like I normally do? Crap. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very angry and disappointed with Canon that they talk about this being their best low light camera and it's not. So uh, turn off the gain, don't use that. The ISO is better. You can see that it's a slightly softer noise. So that is my choice <laughs> for uh, a camera, I think now, be because it's so small, because it's got reasonable infrared, it's, it's slightly softer than what this is, but you know, it's the camera I think I'd rather have. And what I would like to swap this camera for was one I was thinking about but did dismiss because it's not a camcord. It's not as flexible as, you know, I would like. It doesn't have infrared. And that is the Canon R5C because it has the same picture styles. So wide dynamic range on that is just as good as what you get in here. Uh, and there's uh, a lot of other things to like about it, especially the picture quality is what I was really after. That much more de detailed image, much cleaner image. Because I get a bit of a look at that with the R6, because that does have that sharper and cleaner sort of image about it. It is the low light king, there is no doubting that at all. Alright, hopefully I detect and stuff is working on all of his. Got the cameras sort of on an even part. Well not really. R6 XF605. Yeah, we'll see how they go. On this side we have the R6 and on this side we have the XF605 in full quality. Do we look beautiful? Has eye detect and face tracking got me? I bloody well hope so.
when the weather is overcast, I go for the R6 because these two just aren't good enough in low light. R6 just absolutely kills them. But for filming myself, like you can see now, my skin tones don't look very good. That's because it just doesn't have wide dynamic range mode. The uh, Log 6 isn't all that much different. So I'm just in standard at the minute. All right, so let's just talk about now what I absolutely love about this camera. The infrared is a lot sharper and possibly a little less noise as well. So the two images that I'm putting up now were shot at quite a distance. It would be about 15 metres away from me. And they're looking really beautiful. I've shot inside my nesting boxes with it as well. Uh, and there is a definite quality change in there. But the big one that I, I absolutely was amazed when I first tried it, and that's handheld stabilisation. Alright, now we're focusing and holding the camera. This is powered and held. Turning it really nicely. This is manual focusing handheld. I'm going to start now and see how quickly I can get my subject into focus. There it is now according to the square. Let's just have a look at how the stabilisation is handheld. So this is um, dynamic I think. How's it going? <laughs> I don't know. Swap over to powered. How's it going now? Is it pretty good? Or is it crap? Just amazing blew me away I shake a bit using the 400 I struggle to keep it stable it struggles to help me out even though you know a younger person it can look like it's almost on a tripod but not for me I just shake a little bit and the R6 is exactly the same so handheld work pretty well much out of the picture but with this absolutely amazing and here's some of the clips that I took with it But there is a but with this stabilisation and that is some funny little things that happen while we're filming. So I get started, everything's looking good and then all of a sudden there'll be a little bit of a shake movement. Now I'm being very smooth and I'm just, you know, going, wow, this is just awesome. How much control I have on it and just keeping nice and smooth and moving, following my subject. But all of a sudden, we get this jerky movement. So it might jerk upwards or slightly to the side. And then directly after that, the camera pulls to the right. Every time it does this. And it really feels like there's a ghost or something pushing the camera to the side. It just does it consistently. So as I'm feeling following my subject... It may happen towards the start of filming, or it might happen in the middle of filming, or closer to the end. But somewhere along the line, it's going to do it. And it, does, it has done it with every handheld clip that I have taken. 
slight jerk up or to the side and directly after goes to the right so it's annoying it ruins your images because generally speaking you're following something you're only going for about 30 seconds at the most so hopefully do we get some sort of clip out of it that hasn't got that jerky movement so I don't know why Canon haven't fixed this problem there must be a lot of these cameras out there it's been out for over 12 months now there must have been some complaints about this unless I'm the only one that's using it handheld but it is awesome otherwise so so stable a pleasure to use and I was quite happy every time I saw something behind me when I'm filming and my subject in front of me to rip it off the tripod and start filming something going on over the other side here I don't think there's any need for me to talk about any more about the camera I am sort of really wanting to yeah, move this out of the way sell it keep this for the infrared capabilities and the handiness of the size being able to use it with the with the remote it's still a really capable camera uh, using the rc probably still for myself because of the wide dynamic range but this will be that extra camera that does the things that the uh, r5c won't be able to do there you go that's it that's all you're getting from me angry man <laughs> more up myself a little bit on canon because why can it? Why is there so much noise in every lighting condition? It just shouldn't be happening. Huge amount of money, 6,600 I paid for that camera and it isn't worth it as far as I'm concerned. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sure you got a lot out of it besides my waffling on. <laughs> and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel and get more of this amazing stuff, click on my pretty little face to stand in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Hit the little bell, you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you wanna go and have a look at all the other mad and crazy things I've been doing, click on my icon right here at the end of this video, take it to my channel. I talk about photographing and filming in a forest environment. I go on adventures and I take you with me. I also talk about cameras, camera equipment and give you my honest opinion on them. Now remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing, filming wildlife, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.